Ten seconds remaining. Five seconds remaining. TNC's turn to ban. LGD's turn to ban. Ten seconds remaining. Five seconds remaining. TNC's turn to ban. LGD's turn to pick. TNC's turn to Welcome pick. Welcome back. Night Game number two Stalker. of TNC versus LGD Gaming. LGD, they took game number one. TNC, they want to be able to tie up the series. Even if they are secured in the top four, Group A is actually locked in already after uh, Secret did end up losing to Liquid. Ten so everyone's kind of locked in their positionings. I think except for 5th, 6th, but for this Five series, nothing's remaining. really going to change. But either way, TNC still want to win. Of course, you don't want to go into a match to game right a deal if we don't take away the W. You're, you're a TI, you know what I mean? You want to try to do the, the best possible performance that your, your team can muster. So TNC coming into this game, going with the Bat Rider. Uh, I like... Bat a little bit more as an opener, LGD's considering how the last game went. Like and just considering how few options they really had to kind of take fights to LGD. Yeah. So I think that it leaves you a little bit more open. And uh, the Lycan, obviously, really good against Night Stalker. We talked about the Howl being useful during any sort of nighttime phase where Night Stalker wants to do stuff. Being pretty Ten much better than a Chen Meal in some cases. And this, this is a much more flexible opening that I think uh, Five seconds I can get behind. remaining. Lycan versus Night Stalker. I'm always down with that. TNC's turn to bet. Oh, uh, Oracle is actually going to be picked up by LG. So apparently, LG are going to show TNC how to play Oracle. Yeah, but there's what a bat in this game, is. at least. Yeah. I mean, last game, I think that TNC just picked up Oracle kind of haphazardly. I'm, I'm not entirely sure what the, the plan was because there was Ten not seconds, really a good remaining. synergy hero, I guess, besides maybe Dragon Knight. That you could really partner with Five a false promise. LGD's there was healing because turn to they opened ban. up with ancient TNC's apparition on LGD. So turn yeah, to you ban. pick that oracle and you're just like, okay, well I'm picking this into an ancient apparition. Fate's edict is still pretty good, but there's nothing else that I, I'm really offering in synergy. This time, LGD has something that is hard countered by the oracle. Or sorry, TNC has something that's hard countered by the oracle. So it makes a little bit more sense. Ten seconds and remaining. And I mean, if they want to go fourth ban AA, you can do that. Like, it's, it's not a bad choice if you remaining. want to try to get another core that does benefit from the healing. Yeah. If you're in TNC, do you actually switch the offlane now? Do you make that a support bat rider simply because the Oracle is countering one of your cores? Uh, it's possible. The, the cool thing about that is you can kind of save your pick if you want. Although, I guess if you're going to be trying to have... If you have to pick up a mid in the next two, then it, it might be worth it to just do it sooner rather than later. Just because you LGD's don't want to prioritize picking turn to ban. an offlane over a TNC's mid. turn to pick. But yeah, I, I still think it's possible. I know that a lot of teams have been doing that recently. Just having either one hero in the first two that can switch up uh, roles whenever. Or, you know, halfway through the draft just saying, Hey, we got this hero that could potentially go offlane or play support. Let's just... Swap it up because this hero seems to be better for the draft. Ten seconds remaining. Couple of mids going to be banned. TNC banning away the puck. LGD actually. Five seconds remaining. Turn to pick. Really go off heroes. TNC oh. is actually going to go for Rubik. Okay, so. Why? I like Rubik as a hero. Yeah. But, but. I think this is a hard Rubik game already. Primarily because during the fights, there's a couple Ten of ways that Rubik can play remaining. the game. TNC's you really don't ever want to be in front line. You yes. always want stuff in front of you that's going to be able to kind of cause chaos so you can steal the spells that you want. I think Lycan and Batrider do a pretty good job of that. So that's definitely something to their credit. I just didn't really see anything that kind of made me think, okay, Rubik is going to be able to get some pretty decent spell 
and cause a lot of ten seconds I guess, turn to pitch. Like, the, having the fissure is one thing. That that is a very good spell to steal on a Rubik. But other things like Echo Slam, for example, you don't have aftershock, so it's not like that spell really offers you that much. Oracle yeah. spells are moderately useful to steal. Same with Night Stalker. There's nothing really that I'm looking at besides the fissure and saying, Ten okay, seconds this is an remaining. impactful thing that I can get. I've got it, Draskal. Okay, I'm ready. Rubik Five steals darkness mm-hmm. so they can use darkness and howl together. They, they, you can Ha-ha. definitely do that. It's <laughs> the one time, it's it's actually an okay time to use darkness as a Rubik. Yeah, I, I don't know. I'm, I'm kind of wondering myself like yeah, what the, the reasoning is behind it. I think it's... Like I said, I like the I, I love playing it. It's one of my favorite sports. It's just, he's not really good that that often. Yeah, and he was only kind of made good after the fact with the the Earthshaker pickup. Um, that's an okay steal. Now Sven, both uh, Warcry as well as Stormhammer are pretty good for Rubik. So yep. uh, again, after the fact, Rubik Ten is being made a little remaining. bit better pick as the draft goes on. Um, this Sanking though, what about that TNC pick up the Five Sanking? Is this uh, a Rubik Sanking duo? And Batrider is still our offlaner. Uh, looking at the heroes that LGD have, I think it makes more sense than to put the bat in the offlane, to be honest. Yeah. I mean, it's going to be hard to kill either of them. But during the mid-game, the Batrider is going to have a really tough time. There's already a Night Stalker, so your vision's going to be limited. There's an Oracle to be able to break basically any initiation if they're in position. And then there's an Earthshaker as well that can just throw out random fissures to just kind of throw you off. So I'm not thinking it's going to be the easiest back game in the world. You wouldn't expect that, obviously, first picking a hero, but this one especially is going to be tough. So wait, are you down with the Batrider? No, 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 I'm saying, because, Core. I'm saying because it's such a hard Batrider game that I think Sanking Core would make more sense. Okay, yeah. For me, at least. Yeah, I'm down with that. And then Batrider can kind of support him in that offlane, just be the annoying, like, sticky napalm hero, giving Sanking the space to be able to hit yeah. the creep wave. I mean, throwing a dual lane down there is not a horrible LGD's idea. LGD's yeah. turn to yep, ban. Yep, yep, for sure. Uh, last ban out, Timbersaw by TNC. We've seen uh, a couple different wow. LGD's turn to TNC's like turn to, to the Sven carries a flash rack. Well, that's certainly uh, a surprise pickup from LGD. So a mid flash rack, right? Yeah. I would think so. Yeah, there's there's no other way to to really run this. It is kind of nice though against heroes that kind of want to be up in your face. Remaining. So like Batrider, Lycan, Sandkang, they're all pretty close Five proximity in the remaining. fights. Pulse Nova's going to do a ton of work in this game. you got a bajillion disables now. Yeah, You can just stun lock someone to death. Even a, a Lycan if he doesn't have BKB. Just, you know, Fissure and Chant into Stormhammer. Your Split Earth. Lots and lots of damage output. And the cool thing too is that LGD have a good balance of damage. I guess you could argue that TNC are pretty much the same. They have the, the Lycan for the physical DPS and then the other three are magic. Whereas, you know, LGD the... Um, Diabolic Edict is not pure magical damage, so you have physical through that, you have Sven, so both teams have a good balance of damage. This time around, TNC have much better heroes for killing creeps as well, which I think is a criteria that nowadays you just have to be able to hit. If you cannot clear waves, your game is going to be very hard. Right. What's left, though, for TNC in the, the mid lane? Because we've had a whole lot of mid laners banned out, and it's versus a Leshrac. Yeah, actually, there are a ton of mid spans. Has to deal with a uh, four position night stock. You well. may now select your heroes. Okay. A little bit of a non traditional mid matchup. Lesh versus. Is this like TI5? Am I watching TI5 right now? Yeah. It's kind of what it feels like. Kind of weird. I think it's a Diffusal Blade carry, right? That's good. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It is very good against Sven. You can. Even buying Lincoln's Amarana doesn't feel that bad a lot of the time because you benefit from the regen. Sure. You're going to stay out on the map forever. Get your Manta Diffusal. And do a lot of work later on, transition maybe into like MKB or something. Yeah, I think the, the Marana rounds out TNC's lineup fairly well. I'm not sure how I feel about their laning phase. Because they are going to have the uh, support Sand King Rubik combination. They're going to put Sam H on the Batrider anyway. Probably a, a comfort factor for him. Mm-hmm. Just saying, okay, I play this hero a lot. Even if it's not an ideal bat game, I'm still the best bat player. So I'm, I'm just going to play the hero on the offlane and try to make it work. If it does end up being the Sam H, Batrider, and Tim Sandking lane, I think they'll be able to during the first five ten minutes. But I'm apprehensive as to how much the Batrider is going to be able to do mid-game. If he can actually, if they can both get their blink daggers, 
that'll really help out the Marana a lot. I think it, it's a very important for you to have strong initiators and frontline heroes for the Marana. Uh, you Prepare can't really let yourself battle. be initiated on, right? If they get the, yeah. the Blink Dagger span, it's just a couple of swipes to God String. That's going to be a core dead super Patience fast. from Zoe. So hopefully this aggro Brutal, duel savage, does do very Brutal, well. Brutal, savage, ranked. Brutal, savage, ranked. Uh, meanwhile, LGD are going to be looking at this to just farm Ame up. Farm, farm, farm. Just like last game with the uh, the Morphling. I'm not exactly sure where Leshrac fits in this uh, in this patch. Like, how, how how good is it as a space creator? How good does it scale into the late game anymore? Uh, these are all kind of mysteries to me since we have not seen a core Leshrac or even much Leshrac at all. Uh, I think he is quite strong, actually. Yeah? Mainly because of his talents. Like, if you look at his level 10 and 15, they're insane. Like, yeah. either movement speed or health, both fantastic. 400 mana for a hero who is, you know, he needs mana to be able to deal damage. Very, very strong. And later on, you get the, the extra 300 HP from his 20 talent. Then you either get the Lightning Storm Slow or Diabolic Edict, which I think most people settle for Edict just because it, it doubles, well, over doubles the effectiveness of the spell. And it becomes insane how fast you can, like, deploy shit and kill. But you could get the perma slow. The you perma could. lightning slow. You could get the perma the lightning slow. Get Octarine. It's a three second cooldown. It's a three the second slow. To the impurity. Don't stop. Yeah, I, I think it's actually four seconds slow, though. Because it's oh, one second true. plus the three. So it's yeah. more than 100% uptime if you have Octarine. Damn. Yeah, it seems really good on paper, right? But then. Against some heroes that have like escapes or Lycan, for example. I say Lycan who doesn't yeah, get slowed just, down. He doesn't care. But that's why I think Lesh is picked here, because Lycan yeah. is the hero that wants to be in your face. And when you have Pulse Nova and Edict going at the same time, no matter how much damage you do, you're going to get chunked, right, before you right. can take down that Lesh. And it's really, I think, a bit easier to itemize on Lesh against this style of team. You know, once you get your BKB and an armor item, you're good to go. You just walk in there. So Sam H does manage to successfully cut one creep wave and get himself to that level two. Uh, Old Eleven actually with the uh, Enchant Totem first, feeling pretty comfortable about his Rubik Lycan lane. He is actually going to challenge the, the Lycan first. Yes, immediately. I really like this choice over the like the level one Fisher and going for like the Bok or whatever. This this feels a lot better. He's going to be able to do pretty well, I think, in this. If it ends up being more of a supports roaming around situation. Missed done in mid lane, maybe. Whiffs his first split hurt, but it is a very, very small aim. Yeah, that's 150 rates. Done. It's done on the old 11. A little bit of chip damage. Uh, or Rubik is not going to be there in time. Telekinesis. This poor man shield is going to do an insane amount of damage against these supports. I mean, they do get the D ward, though, so a little bit of a bummer here for old 11. But Rubik is just no damage. Like, I guess with a Howl, that might be enough to supplement. Yeah, with the, the combination of stuns plus Howl, they might have enough damage to bring him down. And do so now, the Enchant Totem Aftershock gives him a little bit of space, but they're still going to write him down. One more right click. They find him. Shaking. Tim's. Yeah. First blood on the sand like, strikes the perfect sustain. That was a clutch thing. He knew remains. that Old Eleven was going to jump to the right, I'll so he ate the tree in front of the other tree. Mm -hmm. That gave him vision to be able to get the last there. one. Was up, so. Nicely done. <laughs> Owl coming in huge. This is a level 3 bat rider. His, uh, his lane is going very well for himself. Now, he can't really get too much on the offensive, because Sticky Napalm can just be removed by uh, Fortune's End. But. There's no real threat there either. Yeah, he can't die in this lane. He has to, like, dive the tower, I think, to end up falling here. He does need to be very careful though, about how many stacks he's giving Ame and Yao, respectively. Like, you can't just throw his sticky napalms out 24 7 in this lane. Yeah. Six and eight stacks. So, all things considered, does look like LGD is going to be able to take a little bit more of the win of the laning phase. Uh, mid's going very well for the last rank compared to the Marana, mostly because the Night Stalker is sitting mid so often. Uh, and it looks like they might just be able to kill Sam H with Victoria's help here. He's going to go for the TP out right on top of the cliff. They don't have Void up, so they do manage to get that kill. They managed, they went through two levels of purifying flames onto Yao. Uh, definitely, if they could have seen him, they brought the. Bat right pretty close. Really nice juke. Just getting himself in that one spot where there's no vision. 
And for now, I think that it's just going to be a lot of moving around from, you know, Victoria and Tim on either side. Ours. Just seeing if they can find anything. A stun into an arrow can very easily be a kill on Navy in the mid lane, especially if he's not topped off. And at the same time, I guess it's a bit harder to kill Cuckoo because he does have a team. So maybe there will be less pressure from LGD from here on out going towards that middle lane. Hold the left needs some pass here. Dude, that poor man's shield is god tier in this matchup. Like, you can't kill him. He's he's forced Raven to burn through all of his region now. He may get caught here. Yeah, this is the downside of so much aggression, right? Is that eventually you are going to get caught by a rotation. With the how damage they're doing so much work. Victoria is going to be able to come down. Goes for the slow onto Raven, but Tim's going to be the one to be able to catch up to him. It does have a burrow strike up. He's going to come in, try and get some more. They get a hold onto Tim. Victoria's going to chase him down with a the void. They are going to be able to get that kill. The other TNC members uh, just not really able to do anything. Lankin doesn't have the movement speed to keep up with these heroes. And Rubik doesn't have the damage. The Howl is gone. Mage, gonna... time to run. Yeah, he's got no Firefly left. He's out of there. They're wrapping around mid, though. It's an interesting one because he can leap, but it's still going to be held in place for a while. Maybe long enough for maybe to be able to hit the split or stun. And they do manage to finish him off. Victoria dies, though, underneath the tower. And now Tim's gets the stun on the maybe. But with the double null talisman, it's actually quite Dyer's top tower is under attack. Maybe. Gotta go again, but uh, Tim's careful, friend. Oracle does a lot of damage, pull him back. But the TP takes so long. For Cuckoo. He's oh, gonna have slow. to he doesn't even have the leap actually, so he's gonna have to try and maneuver around some of this. They do manage to throw a strike, finally gets the leap forward, finish off maybe with the extra star so storm hit on the Yao Tim survives through it all with tower. Cuckoo tank of the tower and TNC, despite the very long TP that I thought was gonna be ending up in disaster. They do manage to make that gank work. Yeah, the Cossack finale so uh, ended up allowing them to catch up at the last second to be able to secure that kill. Really big for TNC to get these kind of like laning phase kills because if you look at the CS, the Sven and the Leshrac are still kind of just dominating. This this Cuckoo Marana has 13 creep kills. Out of my minutes. way! That is not, not nearly where you want to be at this point. So all things considered, TNC did a pretty good job and scraping together. Maybe if you had gone to bottom lane, you could have stopped this and maybe even gotten a kill. Old 11 goes for the double stun, tries to run to the trees, but he knows. Inevitably, death awaits us all. Well, at least he's making a lot of heroes kind of come back to the lane. To with it. It's probably not the best feeling in the world, but at the same time, Urshaker doesn't really have the lane. Maybe slow down, trying to get over to the cliff. Victoria could have actually just chased after him with Hunter the Knight. I'm really Radiant's surprised he just tower didn't. Under uh, attack. With the extra movement speed, he would have done a lot of physical damage on his Sam Mage. And then the Void could have finished him off, but does get another Void in now. Sam Mage bumps back over to mid lane. They do manage to kill the baby. Tim's in 1437 rotating in mid lane once again. Maybe poor Raven to the mercy of the Earthshaker. Rubik is level 5 in 6 minutes. Damn. What the heck? 1437 and Tim's. Like, we don't normally see this dual roam a whole lot. Like, a lot of the time, one support is dedicated to trying to zone out. Together, they're just able to do so much on the map. They're going to be wrapping around deep on this bottom lane. Maybe he's even going to TP. He thought about it last time. This time he's going to commit to trying to kill Raven. Maybe he's going to hit this split earth. It's going to Have to use the two because here comes Tim. He managed to get a stun in. Victoria's going to slow down Raven. Trying to get farther back, deeper into the shrine area of LGD. They are going to be able to bloody block Raven in. Looks like he's going to be dead. Maybe fights up against two. Burrow Strike actually does kill maybe. But it slays the same team first. Ends. Jeez, man. This game is just non-stop. 12 kills in a 7-minute game. Basically every single lane is fighting except for top. And there is still like some contention on like the creep stacks and whatnot as Sam H going in trying to to be as greedy as he possibly can about this laning phase. They might even be trying to set up to kill Yao here. It's it's kinda tough though. Diving against Fate's Edict when your your heroes pretty much only really do magic damage. I guess they do have last one. Raven pulls the hell off. LGD, no way they have enough damage to actually take like Dyer's top tower is under. I wanna go back to that that dual roam. Uh, that you were talking about because that is a very interesting point that we don't see a whole lot of that from the current meta It's usually a little bit more separated than the core position Coupled with these cores to be able to pick up kills here We've got two supports as a duo 
and and they they showed this very early on to the draft. Do you think Dyer's this is a, in part is under a reaction to the Oracle Illusion. pickup, like seeing this Oracle and knowing that it's just not really that strong of a rotating hero in comparison to the duo that they're going to be running, the Sand King and, and Vic? Do you think that in some way in a draft abuse that they see a, a weak support here and they're just like we're just going to go for kills? On our support. Dyer's to top tower is well, under attack. Well, they just experienced attack. it in the last game, right? Yeah. I mean, you're, you're basically just saying exactly what happened to TNT when they Dyer's had the Oracle of Cells again. The old 11. He's got a TP, but not sure if he can get Yeah, that's a really good Radiant vision block. Radiant structures are fortified. Cut through oh the trees. 1437. Might just spot him last second. No, the TP Dyer's up first. Dyer's top tower is under attack. Meanwhile, mid lane, LGD, they're trying to clear through these creep waves so they can get to the tower and get a little bit of time on the game. Will stand strong in front Dyer's of the tower, top Poo -Poo tower takes has a fallen. On a top lane net worth chart. There are a lot of TNC members looking pretty healthy. Even the Sand King at 2100, while maybe suffering pretty badly. But uh, Ame is always the top net worth it seems for LG. Well, I think there's a, a lot of what you said is true about the dual roam and just Oracle's inability to, to react kind of to that. If you're not already in the dual stop, it's just a That's an easy kill. But if, if the heroes are already in position to stop the double, even potential triple stun with the Marana arrow coming out from Cuckoo, it's already too late. Like if you TP as that gank happens, you're not going to make it. Dyer's top tower Thanks. is under attack. Three man smoke up. Yao, he just. He had a ward down already, and he's going to lay another ward. TNC. The prize is mine. Ame. Uh, Ame. So greedy, going to be trying to farm the nature. Shit. Pop all that magic damage. Venice. They, they saw that, right? They saw that from this ward. I think, uh, at least I thought they did. Do you think, like, maybe they just thought the rotation was going to go mid or something? I think it's super dangerous to farm low ground when you see that. Yeah. Like, regardless. That was so greedy for Mame. Even if you think that they're going to go to another lane, you probably still at least walk to high ground, right? Because it's right there. Yeah. Like, you pull the camp out and you try to stand near your shrine or something. Dyer's the, bottom the tower is under attack. Nonetheless, another Radiant's solid kill. Radiant's middle tower is PNC under attack. A tie to, to the impurities. Arcane boots, double null talismans, magic wand. Or maybe as he starts building things. I wonder what the build was. Maybe. Yao is sitting behind Dyer's all the leopard. He doesn't have false promise. And TNT are beginning to corral LGD in, but with the wolf scouting, Dyer's they don't really feel Korea comfortable staying in deep, especially since they saw Baby's TP Cuckoo does have Dyer's to get away from this tower one. So is under attack. Sets up nature's blasted core. TNT this time around being a bit too greedy, trying to force kills and force towers down. I mean, he left aggressively like, towards the tier 2 tower of LGD in this off lane. Not entirely sure if he was expecting like less of a reaction, but they, they do have some words in the area, so maybe he felt a little bit safe, ended up putting himself a little bit too far out of position. Gives away quite a bit of gold to this Leshrac, who up until now is definitely Dyer's suffering. Dyer's top tower is under maybe attack. Maybe a few deaths under his belt, too. But all this action across the map, and Ame himself still sitting atop of net worth, only with one death, and he can just kind of safely farm away. That kind of aggression, you know, if they, like, waited say 30 seconds to make that kind of move the the bat rider's pushing out top really hard yeah. so at that point in time like eventually he's going to force a rotation and then you can go into dyer's middle tower do is under me. attack that truck's going to be some sort of oh, the illusion oh, fine, TNC, i think just kind of jump the gun a little bit really want to be able dyer's to middle tower can, is under knowing attack. that lgd is going to be playing uh, quite heavily uh around this jungle area so if they can take away some of these outer tier tier one towers, especially the off lane tier one tower as well as the mid tower, can kind of open up that off lane jungle to invasion a bit. I think that it speaks volumes about how TNC feel their chances are against like the mid late game of LGD, just because of how little they have to really deal with this fed. I mean, sure, you're going to be able to get an infusible. Oh, Burrow strike. He's going to be able to get on top of him with the Enchant Totem. He has Echo Slam, but Ame doesn't want to follow that one up. It's a good thing, too, because they do have 1437, who stole Split Earth. Just a minute ago from the last round. And should pick up one kill. Ame's going to be able to go on to Tim's here. Split Earth from maybe himself is going to be able to hold the Sand King a little bit longer. 1437. And turns around, just gets whatever damage he can. Throws out the main. There's no escape from LGD front.
four heroes down to this bottom lane. Really nice reaction from LGD. Get a Radiance bottom tower tier has one safe lane tower. In the meantime, though, Raven's making the best use of his time. Dyer's middle lane, tower is two. under attack. He's gonna force at least one person on the side of LGD to, to go ahead and TP back. And they're Radiant also getting a little bit scanning. of damage on the tier one in the mid lane. So it's not as if TNC just lost that hero for no reason. Or heroes. As they, they, they know Sam Age is here for this event support earlier. Now Sam Age is gonna be able to grab Victoria, which lands through the arrow, but with maybe Alpha have so much damage, he quickly kills the Batrider and shoes away. Now Old Eleven is especially since he has the Echo Slam. They've got the control to build to catch Cuckoo as well, throws the Fisher towards the Zing King. Doesn't quite hit him though. Still, LGD take another two members Dyer's of TNC top down to the is grave. Under attack. And they're ra really just not I'll getting enough tribute. out of these scenarios. Like Raven, yeah, it's Radiant space structures off the are okay, fortified. Of course, that bottom lane, there's space for the Batrider at top. Here, it's space for Raven to get farmed. That's but exactly. there's only so much space you can create if you're also feeding away kills a lot. I agree. It's Eventually, you're going to get to a point where you need to have Raven come to a fight, and if you've died so much that LGD just have an item advantage on you, then it's, it's definitely not worth it. I just don't know what they really do without Raven having like the one extra item and perhaps <laughs> because can you walk into Sven Urshaker and a Lesh? That is an insane amount of damage. Like normally Lycan wants to walk in, he wants to hit you know one hero and just say okay you're dead. But if he focuses somebody against Warcry and also having the false promise as well to fall back on, you can't run in. You just can't. So now you need to wait for like a Batrider pickoff. They're going to be more reliant on their capability of split pushing and trying to force a favorable engagement in numbers, I think. TNC to feel comfortable making a fight. We casted a game of TNC. Dyer's Raven, bottom tower is under attack. Yes, Dyer's as structures are fortified. Radiant's uh, middle tower I, is I, under I, attack. I can feel the, the positives of both, right? I can Dyer's see the naked, bottom negative tower aspect is under of attack. Mask of Madness because you're facing it up against physical damage. Book is great against Lush, though. It's and, very yeah, exactly. And there's a positive side. A book would have been a lot better versus the Leshrac. But then you would have Book Wolves against Earthshaker, where there's that you know potential for a bigger Echo Slam. Where do you kind of lean on this scale? Which item build would you have preferred? So the Mask of Madness doesn't really give you too many downsides against the magical damage heroes anymore. So I, I kind of see like the farming capability of it being great. Armlet is just another really cost-effective item. I just think that until he has BKB, it doesn't really matter which route he takes. Like even if he had Book, can he can he go in with the Book three? No. I don't think so. Yeah. I mean, can you go in with Armor Mask of Madness? Probably not. It's it's going to be down to can they outnumber? Yes. Four man smoke up. LGD. Gonna pop the darkness here. Victoria is going to lead the way to try and find it here. Raven does manage to get off his ultimate before the set. Dodge it? No, doesn't dodge it. Split Earth Wave is coming from behind. Timps hits the epicenter, and now the turn from Raven. He baited it all out. Now TNC lay out the trap. Maybe he's going to die. Raven holding his position around the left track. Out. He does manage to get the Enchant Totem, Echo Slam hit, as much damage as possible, but really LCD have lost too many members to try and fight that one. Both the Sven and the Night Stalker give up on that engagement. They even had a double damage, dodge straight on them, but there was just attack. too many members of TNC up for him to fight. That's the ideal like, engagement. First, bottom they're fighting around night time because the Night Stalker popped his ultimate. Radiant's so you middle get the tower double benefit of the attack. Howl during that. The second thing is, LGD were not all there at the same Dyer's time. Bottom tower so is under when attack. I say they need to outnumber in order to be able that's to fight LGD effectively, that's pretty much exactly what we're talking about. Because what if, you know, Yao's able to get his false promise off onto maybe? Like, he was doing a crap ton of damage. He just doesn't have any armor items, so he still kind of got chewed. He needs more to be able to kind of tank those fights and get that sustainability going for himself. And Ami wasn't there to be able to pop War Cry either. So they were not as one unit when they initially engaged, and that's why TNC were able to win. So we need to continue with your TNC just pushing these lanes, pulling LGD apart, finding the, the optimal situations to take the lanes. Sam H is getting closer to the Blink Dagger. Certainly help out if they have that extra form of initiation. A whole lot of chaos between the Sand King and the Bat Rider. Oracle may not know which uh, target to be able to throw the false promise on. Well, Cuckoo has his damage coming along. He has the Dragonlance, has the Yasha. Uh, I'm presuming to use Blades as the next item choice. I would think so. I don't I, think against the... Yeah, 
Against that team, yeah. Mantis style just seems really bad, actually. Yeah. Which Maybe is, he even goes S and Y. The prize is mine. I'd be kind of down with that. A little bit of boost and then like break it apart for the man. I think so. I think. Well, he could either do that or just go straight to music. Ame almost has his BKB. Maybe a fairly big power spike. But again, it's. For LGD, it's more about making sure that you're all there and you're all on the same page and you want to take the same engagement. Because bottom, there was some either miscommunication or maybe was overestimating his own ability. Either way, TNC were able to abuse it to, uh, to its fullest extent. And now they're playing it a bit more passive. They're getting scouted out by the Wolves too. The TNC have full information of what's going on right now. I think TNC... They just played it really well, right? That four-man smoke, they're just running out. But TNC, especially those two supports playing on the hard right-hand side in this jungle area, so they're able to pop out. Like, the first target that you see as a Lycan, who's already popped his shape ship. You know, that that's just really good read by yep. TNC to see what was happening. The gang was coming. Kind of uh, keep their... The best targets, which be probably be like the squishier, squishy initiators, like the Bat Rider and Sanky. Radiance those, those bottom would be the tower is under attack. Jump on first. They'll be able to do that soon too. Ame getting that BKB. He'll be able to kind of force TNC into an unfavorable position. They'll either run away or they'll try to like group up a bit and help. And that opens up the spot for Old Eleven to get maybe a, a better Echo Slam. That pounding you hear? That's Earth Shaker's War Drums. He's prepping himself. He wants to kill. He wants it pretty badly. He wants to keep that enchant totem up for the extra hit, but Tim's just not going to show himself. He just sits on top of that uh, creep wave. He uses two different sandstorms to push out and then backs away. He doesn't want to put himself too Radiance far out there. Radiant's top tower is under attack. Potential pick against Radiant LGD. structures it are fortified. It is nighttime now. TNC just picked up a double damage on it too. So he's going to be feeling pretty comfortable. Oh, they know Ame is not there. The bull scouted Ame. TNC want to go. With the Moonlight Shadow, double they're going to be down. able to pick up Victoria. Telkinese is back, trying to hold him in place. But Tim's actually wants something bigger. And he's going to be able to see maybe that's a big one. False Promise immediately going down. Tim's going to be able to follow disable. And here comes Raven. Echo Slam onto Tim's. But it's not nearly enough damage to be able to bring down the big cores. As they now come in, Raven's on full HP. Enchanto going to be able to slow him down. Cuckoo comes in with the extra bit of damage. Finally, Ame is here. They managed to get 1437 in the back line, but maybe he's still going to be ripped apart with the big hound. Raven. Oh, he's out of shape shift. And Ame has both blink and a hammer. Coming up, Raven. Can he survive through this one? They desperately need a bump back. The flame break's going to be able to get it, and he gets the armlet toggle off. So now maybe he's just going to be kited around. Jump forward and kills Victoria. Nice play from Cuckoo. Gets them full. LGD. Get wasted by TNC. As you said, like, they... they they saw the wolf, or sorry, they saw the Sven. That's exactly the information they need. Unfortunately, Cuckoo gets a little ahead of himself. He actually runs into maybe his TP in the shrine. Gives a kill back to LG. But all in all, still a great fight. For TNC. Just if one time, if Ame and maybe are in the same fight at the same <laughs> time, there is no way the Lycan can do what he's been doing. And again, it's props to TNC for finding the optimal time to engage and I'll Raven being so team. adamant about using his roles to scout. It's, it's given them tons of information. Radiant's mid tower is the under attack. But if the war cry is there, the Lycan cannot just, you know, fly through. I guess, you know, Raven going back, not buying the BKB, opting for the Diffusal Blade himself. This could be an item that kind of changes the dynamic of the fights anyway, because if you can dispel the war cry, then Hate. it's pretty much as if Ame is not there and the guards are being able to hit somebody and deal a good amount of damage. And the downside is that if you get, get the chain stunned, you can still be in a little bit of trouble. Yeah. Yeah. It also helps for targeting maybe right, because uh, all less rack cores eventually build a Yule Scepter, which looks like he's going to go for a second. And you just want to kill that item, that hero as quick as possible. The damage over time is so tremendous. They're going to be able to get not just one, but two. They grabbed maybe with the lasso and also took out that Oracle. So no false promise save. He does have the Bloodstone Suicide. Kind of minimize the uh, economical damage. TNC would have been so much more than that kill. They are going to be able to take the mid tier one tower as well. But they're actually going to try and chase down LGD. The arrow. Oh, it nailed Ame. And Old Eleven. He has to somehow stop this, but I don't know how. He throws out the Fissure, hits on a Cuckoo. Ami's going to pop his BKB, but a Glimmer Cape keeps 1437 safe. They are just going to be able to kite around Ami, and he needs some sort of miracle couple of hits. Nice blink away. 
heads into the Roshan pit, blinks upwards, is going to be able to save himself over our Radiance Bat top Rider, tower is under attack. Who is uh, keeping Old Eleven in place, sticking a pump and a TP up. Man, are they both going to escape? That is legit from LGD. I thought they were both dead. The juke coming in from Ame was really nice because as soon as Cuckoo leaped in, the Sven turned around and he says, Oh, okay, you want to leap into me? I'll Dyer's just bottom tower so, yeah, who tries is under to use attack. the vision of the Roshan pit to juke, and instead Ame realizing that he's actually the one in trouble. Uh, to get this about very nicely done, like I said, from the side of LGD. Still, though, a lot of problems now. Because those two fights that TNC took were so favorable for them, like the Leshrac doesn't really have many charges on his Bloodstone, it's down to six. He bought Boots of Travel, which is fine. You know, they'll be able to play, I guess, a little bit of split pushing, but against the Batrider, who already has Blink and with some type of force stuff, it's very scary to get out on the map like that. You're going to need a support behind you. I think almost at all times, if, if you want to start to play that kind the of stuff. The prize is mine. Yeah, I think LGD were looking at their strategy, really hoping Dyer's that top with is under the Lashrak and the Bloodstone pickup, as well as the Link Dagger on Old Eleven, that they would be able to contest TNC four versus five right. a lot of the times. And they would get Yule Scepter and then make uh, the maybe Lashrak even stronger. Fortified. But now they, they have to fight. They lost too many Dyer's fights. They need this fantastic. Still sitting way ahead of anybody else. Kuku is going to be hot. LGD bring down that mid lane. How can you trying to go for it? I'm so confused. I didn't even know you could walk that way. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. There is actually a path that can go all the way over. Oh, yeah, it's the one tree block. I remember. You can, like, tango and, and walk through. That's nice. Good stuff. It, it buys a little bit of time, I guess. There was, like, four heroes, I think. Three heroes that walked up top. For to get the and Raven has just not been under any pressure for a very long time. He's been able to freely walk into fights. He's always able to hit the target that he wants. They get the kill. They get out. Radiance top tower is under attack. While LG Radiant structures are wall. fortified. Dyer's bottom tower has fallen. Radiance top tower has what fallen. What do I do in this position? Start prepping to defend their tier two. They just keep on going. I'd be pretty scared of getting caught if I reached that tier three at all. Dyer's bottom tower uh, is under attack. Radiant are scanning. Did go for the Manta first, so I guess he's not really feeling comfortable about the Night Stalker silence. Yeah, I mean it's it's a fine item to save yourself. That's if you're looking for just solely a defensive utility, Manta is still fine in this game. It's just not useful against like Sven and Lesh and Earthshaker. The the illusions don't really offer much aside from like split pushing potential and a, a way to dispel yourself. Then four man smoke up. With the Moonlight Shadow. Oh, they're gonna run into Ame and he'll uh, quickly cross the or it's just a bit too far away. So big kill. Big, big kill. Because you know, bottom lane's decently pushed out, mid's already pushing in, Light can just handle top lane, so they can go for an objective off of this one. Could even be Roshan. Roshan's actually up. We haven't talked about him. It's been a lot of fighting, so. That's exactly what they want. They even have the stolen warcry on 1437. It doesn't seem like a huge spell, but 20 armor, 12 movement speed for 8 seconds is amazing. Radiant's top tower is under attack. That's gonna be sick, especially for Radiant that. structures. Yeah, exactly. Like, who does he go on? Uh, Ra Raven's like, his defective EMH, he just jumps up so high. When he gets that uh, warcry, because they're already 2900 now. LGD, they're kind of uh, holding on. Like, they probably will come with this uh, fresh pages. Oh, quick, but uh, run. Tim's. Dyer's he is, yeah, tower but now. Oh, attack. he's still stuck on the cliff. He needs Radiant's a little bit of extra health. Another force attack. down. Cuckoo's going to be the one to jump in. They have the Seeking Apalm slowing down these heroes' retreat. Plus, a bump back from the Not lane break is going to be really good. Maybe. He's looking for his opportunity to maybe turn. Nice two man throw strike. And now with a jump in from Ame, he goes straight for a Raven. He looks to be able to bring him down, but it's not quite enough. The lasso from Sam H on the high ground. He's not even flying. He won't be able to TP out, though. Avoid stops him there. Raven going for Victoria. Actually, turns back for Ame because he realized he's low enough to be able to take down the big carry of LGD. Maybe he gets spotted, but he does manage to complete his TP before the stun comes out. TNC take that fight one for three. Uh, LGD were just completely caught off guard there, not expecting the blink up to the high ground. The wards that were placed earlier from the side of TNC providing all the vision necessary to be able to take that team fight, and they just couldn't escape. There's too much chase potential on the side of uh, TNC. Dyer's middle tower is under attack. Being able to leap up to the high ground like that and just run it down. 
<laughs> I can't Dyla's believe that Batrider got the has I'm stuck on cliff lasso. That his he didn't he like had Firefly for like one Dyla's second middle or something. Tower. Like, he was lasso and then he oh, just okay. immediately lost it. Yeah, he couldn't drag up to the high ground. But you know, at the end of the day, it didn't really matter that much. They couldn't even take the Aegis off the Lycan. The like, Raven is still walking around with the, the second life, and now he's got a full BKB on top of this. So this this uh, Roshan into team fight has already secured TNC enough time to get Raven potentially one of the biggest power spikes that he's going to hit the whole game. 24 to 14, 28 minutes in, 5,000 gold. <laughs> I'll take your TNC. 3,000 experience too. Uh, Shiva's almost finished up for maybe that. Illusion. So much against some of these heroes, but I still feel like he is just like too much magic damage as well. Venice. You know, like the Murata coming in, use Blade and such. I, I do think that it's kind of at that point where the Alesh playing from behind. <laughs> trying to go on Ame first. Now we'll see if this actually works for Maybe it's going to be able to sidestep the arrow. Ame's down to half HP already, but it pops a BKB in the God Strike and turns and fights Raven. He's now going to be able to see Sand H. He'll take that kill. Instead, Paul's bomb is actually saving him. This drops lower and lower. And now BB's in a good position, a better position with a shrine activated. Plus the false promise. This epicenter is not going to do anything. Ame's actually going to heal up a little bit. The arrow comes in, actually hits an ancient instead. Hold 11, holds on to the Fisher to be able to finish off Raven. Ages and 1437 gonna be hit by the enchant post. Great extra kill from old 11 in the back lines. Tim, he looks to be able to catch Ami, does so successfully. Victoria's gonna be able to run himself out and a fire flying last though. Just as old actually gonna be able to grab old 11. So LGD, that was actually an okay fight considering uh, the Aegis advantage that TNC had. They're able to fight around false promise and truly ended up being a two for three. Is Even two for three? Uh, they got the... Oh, Aegis. yeah, the Aegis. Yeah. Dyer's middle so tower even with all that, attack. you know, it, it was a good fight, I guess, considering the circumstances, but TNC are still going to be feeling pretty good about their situation. Like, Raven, he's still not really been killed yet. The prize is mine! Like, the Aegis is going to get his uh, level 20 soon. So he can either get the evasion or the cooldown. We're not really sure which you take Dyer's in this case. Structure so structure he's probably not that time. scared to spend anymore, considering your item progression is kind of outscaling him, so maybe you favor the cooldown. It, like middle right now, getting this tier fallen. three, being able to open up the shrines once again, TNC dealing just another solid blow to LGD here. How did that fight go so well for for TNC? Because I thought like Dyer's they got the false promise off and attack. then into the shrine with a less rack on top of the shrine as well, which is just added value since he uses so much. Man. So I thought that would have been great. For bottom shrine it, it looks pretty fallen. good. Uh, I might have to hold that thought as. LGD looking like they potentially wanted to fight, but again, the vision around this area, one more just fades from TNC, the other one will be soon to follow. I, I think a lot of it has to do with the how Sven functions and fights, and like once he's kind of blown his load, he can't really do that much after the fact. Yeah. And if you look at Ame's items, he doesn't have the, the damage. Out. He has the I need to stay alive build, which I think is not really what you want when you have an Oracle, because you buy yourself eight seconds of auto attacks is under attack. Promise. During that eight seconds, you want to kind of ensure that you're getting as much damage out as you feasibly can. And I think that Ame's been forced into this itemization path that's not allowing him to do it. I, I would agree. It felt like Ame's damage is just pretty lackluster in a lot of these fights. I mean, even he turned and started hitting Sam H, and it fallen. took him so long to actually bring Sam H even close, right, to death. The, the, the Lycan is just insanely tanky because his first two talents give him an insane amount of raw health. I think it's like 440 between the two of them. And then on top of that, you're building an armlet. BKB gives you a tiny Dyer's bit of health, too. His top gain is, is under solid. attack. 3.3 is actually quite high. But yeah, it's it's looking a little rough for LGD at the moment. But if Ame can get to a damage item after his AC, perhaps then. Smoke with Moonlight Shadow again. Offering the opportunity for a clean initiation. Fisher does slow that down a little bit, but Victoria may be just easy. Up quite a bit. Force snap, double force snap on a cuckoo. Trying to get away from maybe, but it'll be run down by that ultimate. Raven's actually going to go up the back line, just rips apart the Oracle with his BKB and runs out. You take one, I'll take one, but it's favorable for LGD for sure. Support for a core. They're pushing out. They can catch anybody else. Looks like maybe they can get 1437. Not going to be hit by the Fisher. Could juke with Glimmer Cape. And it's actually going to be able to steal the Fisher. Turn around on old 11. Like he'll be able to make it away. So the one thing that TNC need to be very careful of is the later the game goes, Lesh is actually a pretty potent late game hero. 
You know, you get the the octarine later on. You have the little Radiance middle tower is edicts. under attack. You do it. Just a metric truck ton of damage. Like, it is insane how much you can do in a team fight, especially considering now Radiance he's bottom got the tower team is under he's attack. Two K life. He's not kind of the fall over hero that he was once. There is going to be able to solve that vision and by Old Eleven. Sandy is going to be able to hold him a little bit longer, but Tommy comes in. So Old Eleven's not actually going to be able to die fast enough. Tampa's maybe going to be able to finish off with the epicenter. That was an awkward force tap, though. Wasn't the direction he really hoped. Tommy pops the BKB and TP's out. Attack. So they do manage to kill Old Eleven for that. Maybe catch more. The first strike on to Victoria. Raven's shape shift has now run out, and Victoria has to go to complete that TP. Old Scepter, and not going to make it back to base fast enough. It's the Diffuser Blade setting him down so much. They're driving in so deep for this one, though, and Victoria actually does manage to get off. And now they're going to lose their Sand King potentially more. Sand Age not quite cut by the Shivas. Does manage to blink ahead of that one. Jesus, that Doge is all the way to the Tier 3 for a measly Wish old fulfilled. Night Stalker. Surely a Night Stalker isn't that important. I think that they just assumed he was going to die. I don't think it was a level of importance. I just think they assumed, okay, this guy's got to be dead here, right? And then they just go a little bit too far, and, and the Sand King ends up paying the price. So all things considered, LGD able to buy themselves a little bit of time. Ame with the Assault Curass finish now, he's very close to the Crystals. And even just that one little thing can make a big difference, being able to get that crit during the God Strength, ensure that you can at least kill a target before Radiance your, your bottom BKB tower and your is under attack. It sounds to me, Drasko, that you're looking at this game that, yes, TNT, they've won, you know, a couple of fights and everything, and we've got this network to be very good and everything, but Radiance we're getting late enough to the game fallen. where LGD are going to start taking the advantage, even if you're ahead in network. I just think that that's inherently how Sven kind of works, mm -hmm. is that if you get a lucky crit or two, it doesn't matter how much net worth you have, you're just going to die. Yeah. So the, the emphasis that I guess I'm kind of putting on LGD is something like the Echo Slam, a two-man Echo Slam, especially leading onto a Rubik as well as Raven. He's not going to be able to get off the shape shift here. Excellent. They, they're going to force a buyback, I think. TNT did not expect an offensive maneuver like that. Oh, are they just going to let this go? They... Okay, there goes the Lycan buyback. He has the shape shift. Whoa, that epicenter. He looks like he got by the Yule Scepter, an offensive one that stalls up all of his magic damage there. Raven pops DKB shape shift. He starts going for maybe, but he's taking so much damage from both maybe as well as Ame. Ame was actually ripping him apart there with God Strength. So Raven's going to be forced to pop a shrine here for the shape shift. He's going to be running on cooldown pretty soon here. Oh, the network swing. They're going to lose Sam Age as well. Sam Age is going to run in. Finish the finish off Sam Age. Cuckoo stunned by the storm. Amber, he's going to go down as well. TNC may have just lost this match in the quarter of a minute. There's no buyback even as well. That's no buyback across the board. Batrider, Sand King, Lycan, no buyback. LGD are all a little bit low, but they're all still alive. Dyer's middle barracks are under Dear attack. Dear Lord, what just happened? That's a 10,000 gold swing in a minute. That... That smoke fake back that LGD just did, Dyer's just single-handedly won the game. Attack. Like, they go back a little bit, they're not showing on the map for a while, they come in, they get the two-man echo. Invisibility! Really clutch play from, uh, from Old Eleven there, they force the Lycan to buy back and try to take the fight, but... They're, without the Rubik, they, they basically started a 4v5, right? And, and after that, the, the Leshrac was too tanky, they had the Solar Crest popped on him as well, in addition to the Shivas, no MKB in sight on the side of TNC. So maybe he was just sitting in the middle of all these heroes dealing so much damage, and they just couldn't really do anything about it. That less track was actually pretty tanky in these fights between yeah. the, the Shivas and the uh, aura of the Assault Kiras. I saw Raven try and hit him, and it just wasn't really doing much. Not in comparison to Ame, we could hit the blade, and, uh, and the, the light can just chunk him down. That was an insane turnaround from LGD. I mean, I kind of figured their team fight was still pretty good, even though they were behind, but I didn't expect quite that big of a swing and TNC committing like that when they have tier 2s in other lanes. Like, I thought for a second that Raven was just going to let it go because they have tier 2s. The prize is mine. And they wanted to potentially save the buyback for Roshan yeah. because they knew that it was going to be up soon. But instead, they buy back, they commit to a defense where the middle was already tower dead. Is under attack. I don't know, that, that was like a series of, of really unfortunate events there for TNC. I also feel like Cuckoo's just... Radiance uh, top shrine is under attack. To Radiance top shrine relax, has fallen. Standing. You know, his damage in comparison to the Leshrax, very different. The 
Lycan, not outputting nearly as much physical damage as the Sven does anymore. It goes back to what you're saying, but just naturally LGD's lineup will start I'll taking over the game. Illusion. Well, I figured it would take over, maybe just not quite in that fashion. <laughs> yeah, just you know? not that quickly. You know, you're, you're thinking more like, all right, if this game is, you know, 45 minutes in, I think LGD impurities. probably has the advantage, but it's said LGD is just like, all right, what fight? That's all it takes. God, that was so big. And now they're gonna pop out of the Roshan pit. They wanna go on this map. Most gonna be scouting out Ame. Still another warp time. Always good. For TNC, they need it. Need it real bad. I like how maybe just pulled an Agonims and 2600 gold out of nothing. <laughs> Almost level 25 as well. 18 Bloodstone charges. Remember, he was sitting at level 6. TNC, I don't really know if they want to do this. Yeah, This is so tough. LGD seems so confident that they can win this fight. You know, like how fearlessly maybe he was sitting up front line and goes with Ame. Well, they have vision. I mean, either side of the river right now is warded. They have the sentry down too, just in case, you know, TNC were to be crossing over the map. You look at TNC, they got no shots. They, they can't see the nuts wolves. If Raven doesn't have those things out and, and getting information, it's very hard for them to justify engagement. And because of that, LGD are just able to go claim the Roshan for free. TNC recognize that their best odds of taking a team fight is probably around defending a tier 3 tower. And again, the buybacks being spent earlier, tower is under no attack. one has buyback on the side of TNC. Radiant's top tower has fallen. Desperately need to get to the back line. TNC, if they hope to be able to win a fight, they have to get to Yao's Oracle. I think that's the, the biggest problem with taking that mid fight, right? You're talking about how the vision. So you have such a big vision advantage for LGD. It's so easy for Yao to just sit on the back line. Radiant's you're gonna go tower for whatever hero kind of shows itself. Which is Leshrac sitting on the front line. And Yao's he got like, the fall from false box. He did get the lightning. I think that's the first time I've seen that. Yeah, baby. Slow for days. I mean, it's really good for sure. I just figured, you know, since they were the ones now have the the lead that the diabolic edict in the sense of pushing would just be radiance kind of the scale, shrine, I guess, under attack sure. and his decision making but yeah, I, I would actually I'm curious to see how it works out I, I personally have never has fallen uh, I pretty much always middle tower is under radiance attack. middle tower has fallen in team fights without creeps diabolic edict would have been a lot more effective and like say the lichen start trying to go for the track yeah, yeah, that for is sure. a defensive measure, you know. But you also all those explosions. You also have the perma slow now, and it's so easy to stun when you have a, a four second seventy five percent slow. Like you can just lightning into stun into lightning into stun. Like, you, know, you just can't you can't run away. He almost has Lincoln's as well, which will stop the initiation of both the Bat Rider as well as Sand King. Really cool to see Lushrak again. Especially in a mid-capacity. haven't seen that hero. I, I'm not sure how many times in the first stages this is the first time you and I have gotten to cast him. Pretty cool stuff. And it's also, you don't... Ooh! Oh, the 11. He's been really fast on those counter blinks. You know, when he, we uh, had Tim blink right here, and instantly, boom. Yeah. Oh, the 11 blinked out. It seems like whenever he positions himself a little bit forward like that, he's got maybe, a, like, even queued up. Blink dagger just... Ready to expand that button real quickly. Dude's just lost in us. One of the best. Radiance top tower. He was. Uh, he was uh, uh, maybe gonna be dragged all the way back to the tier four. This is why that link gets butts. And Aegis will help with the first round. LGD is gonna bang on that tier three in time. God strength now. Pop by Ame, but he's gonna be kited around pretty heavily. They do have the false promise for maybe second time. Get out, but the is gonna be able to catch on. They don't have a saving grace here, unless a BKB and a Fisher block can actually keep them at bay. Oh TNC God. could not get around that one. That was so close. Oh, Ame, just 100 HP. I think that TNC will be pretty happy with that. I mean, sure, they got some damage in the tier three, and LGD still maintain a decent amount of map control, but you take the Aegis and you don't lose anything. That's a win because now it's going to be a lot harder for LGD to justify walking up that hill again. I mean, if they want, they can commit maybe to buying the bowling and has the money. Then you won't have uh, you know, buy back. So they buy themselves some time. Uh, they have a smoke as well on LGD. Maybe going for another play here. 
Does time change anything for TNT during the ships that you feel like? I don't think so. Radiant I really don't. are scanning. They're all just kind of like, hey, that's okay. Uh, telekinesis into the arrow, plus the lasso, but they do have the false promise already in place. Tim tries to stop the back line, but he's a bit too late. They do manage to munch onto Yao and are going to be able to catch Old Eleven as well. Defuse Blade pops that Yule Scepter, and maybe, though, is going for the back line as well. He's going for Tim's right now, but Tim's is able to make it out with Hero Strike. That is a huge win for TNC, and exactly why the uh, Lakers is not fully bought out for that Leshrac. TNC, they're not going to lay down in this game. They're not going to let LGD win. Put it man up, take the fight. Win it. Put it good to go for the high ground. They may be forced to buy back. They manage to get the stun immediately onto Ame as he tries to go for Raven. Ball back. Oh, oh what an echo slam. Both 11. Oh, the 11's revenge on TNC. Jeez. And that is no buyback on the Mirana, no buyback on the, uh, the Lycan. I think that's game. Ame just immediately uses the boots of travel to get bottom, starts hitting the tier three. Forces the Glyphy. Yeah, that, that might actually be the name. Well, Cuckoo has buyback. They, they might have a hold, the, the four heroes. They do have Lasso and Epi both available. If LGD are not careful about this, they do not have an Oracle. So there's not going to be any save for the Lasso. Lycan was just 500 gold away from having a buyback. It's not actually Radiance top so LGD are, stu are still going to play it like pretty safe. They're expecting. I mean, you say that. Back here comes the lasso. The pull back here with the epicenter as well. Double four staff. He's going to be able to pull on the all the way to the tier fours plus the arrow. That's the beautiful combination that TNT desperately needed to defend this push as only four. They're going to start chasing down Victoria. A buyback from Ame. He's already TP'd into creep wave. It's on his way in now. Cuckoo's in trouble. They can't let Cuckoo die here, but he's chained stunned up for too long. A counterfisher from 1437, but he's all by his low. A buyback from the Sand King is all that is there. Two of the supports against the horde of LGD. There's no chance in hell. They do have the Lycan up in five seconds, but come on, it's three versus five. How can they possibly do this? Radiance Middle Tower. You don't want the Lycan, it seems to be a little bit too much. Okay, one at a time, maybe one at a time. They're going to be able to get Victoria here. Bring him down. Tower shots, maybe. Oh no, Ami comes back in. Almost kills the Rubik. Been Radiant Yule Scepter to Telekinesis now. Attack. They are going to be able to get some chain stuns onto Raven. Remember, Cape is going to buy him a lot of time until the vision comes out. Raven in trouble, down to half HP. Tim is also in some serious problems. That vision locked him down. Raven pops his head back out from the fountain, but cannot do enough. Tries to go for maybe again, but BKB wears out. Old 11 instantly hits him with the Echo Slam. And that's it. That's game. TNC. Huge game number two as well. And for LGD, could be a little sweet. They knew what they wanted to do, they knew what they were going to get after the fight. It just all kind of fell into place. And you got to feel for TNC because they did work for the first like 15, 20 minutes. They were winning their lanes. Uh, I guess Cuckoo didn't have a ton of farm, but he was getting a lot of kills. 